capping, niggas yapping. You know damn out that ain't happen. Push up Corbin on y'all block we get Yo, we're back with another editing tutorial and in this video I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make this infinite zoom effect. It is pretty easy, you don't have to be advanced in After Effects, just make sure you follow my steps and you'll be able to nail this effect anytime you want. Jumping straight into the composition, I have my two clips placed already, now I'm going to do this effect going through his watch and then I'm going to show you my method on how I do my infinite zooms, not just like how you infinite zoom and then the clip is right here i'm gonna i'm gonna spill some sauce to ya so first things first this is my clip i'm gonna do the freeze frame method just for the sake of the tutorial um but yeah so as he puts his wrist up i do want to have it where it's clear so right here probably want it like right here i'm gonna split this time freeze frame so this is where i'm gonna do the mask i'm gonna have this over the clip like this so it's a couple seconds over you never want to do the, the infinite zoom very fast because it just looks very whack so here i have the first clip what i'm going to do is mask out my subject now you can put it to full so you can make sure you get a proper mask and there you go here's my mask now let's put this to none well no not none let's put it to subtract i'm just gonna have this feather to four now we're gonna duplicate this layer and change this from subtract to add. So as you see, this is just inside of the watch and then this is the outside of the watch. I'm going to color code them just so I know which one is which. So the outside will be yellow and the outside will be red. So now I'm gonna hide that layer and duplicate this about four times. So now we have four clips. Now what we wanna do next is enable 3D layer on all of these. Only the ones that you masked, make sure you enable 3D. So now what we're gonna do is go into our active camera change it to custom view one from one view to two views so now you have something like this so now if you hit c on your keyboard and make sure you're on the lines where it's two arrows you just want to click and drag back and then where it has like a plus sign click and drag a little bit to to the right side and now for every layer behind the top layer underneath your yellow layer what you want to do is hit this blue line and drag it back but what you want to do is make sure it's centered because if you have it misplaced, it won't look clean and it'll look very sloppy. So make sure every layer is farther and farther back, just like this. Make sure it's centered just like that. Make sure you're, you're able to see straight through the watch. So Z all the way back, just like this. Down. Now you can make them see here. You can see how far they are like this. But yeah, that's pretty good. And then for the last one, all the way to the back, just like this. And it looks nice. Now let's just control save. We save that camera and change it from two to one view. Act the camera. So now we have this, right? What we're gonna do is hide all of these layers real quick so we can see this. I'm gonna split it right where these uh, layers end. So we're gonna split right there and I'm gonna put this above every other clip. So this will be the next clip. I'm gonna make this orange clip three and the clip under it will be your transition clip the difference is it'll be under all of this so you will see the clip at full res through this little box and as you zoom in it'll go into its full res making it a very seamless clean transition you'll see what i mean stay tuned so here now we can just make this also a 3d layer and we can go back to this and just push it all the way to the back now as you see this it's all the way in the back as you zoom in, it won't just snap like this. On top of all of these layers right here, you want to right click new camera. You can leave these default, right click new null object. We're going to change this null to purple so I can have like a difference between the two colors. And now I'm going to enable 3D layer on the null object and connect this camera to the null. Now what I'm going to do is hit P on my keyboard that will enable the positioning. Hit this clock icon right here to enable a keyframe and we're going to push the keyframe all the way to the front. So it's like this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the zoom in. Now what we're going to do is go to the two zeros right here. Click and scroll all the way up. Now, as we zoom in, we want to make sure we're going through the watch like this. So here, as you get to the last watch, you want to make sure you're still in the center when you zoom through it. Just like that. It's perfect. Now for this ending clip, we can also just zoom this in a little bit and fit this accordingly. We can hit here on our keyboard to properly, you know, move the Z dist. 
and if we back up a little bit put more down a little bit just like this and now as we go through you'll see this is where our clip will be framed you want to make sure the clip is literally set in place so basically what that means is we're just going to move this clip like this make sure it's how it's supposed to be so now as we take a look we zoom out you see it goes straight through the watch but it's not graphed and it's not clean either so as you see here the clip disappears in the first couple frames what we're going to do is we're going to slow this down a little bit we're just going to enable timer map we want to make sure the keyframe is right there at the end of this clip and click this drag as well as the first keyframe down there and also remember to enable frame blending which is the first icon in the four layer box right here where my cursor is double click that and you'll get this frame blending effect it smoothens out the clip so it's not frame droppy so now you see we have it all the way through just like that a nice little clean zoom in transition but we're not done let's finally polish it now we're gonna re-enable the watch and now what we're gonna do is hit p on our keyboard we're gonna click the clock icon and now we're gonna move right before he zooms in and we're gonna keyframe it vertically down so it's gonna go like this but make sure this layer is behind your first layer so it goes behind the watch instead of it being in the front just like this put this right here maybe to the middle and now we're going to keyframe the zoom in so keyframe assistant what you want to do is highlight both of the keyframes right click keyframe assistant easy ease and now what i like to do is leave a default and just change it to speed graph highlight over this hold make sure you're holding shift on your keyboard and click and drag so i'm going to do something like this so it's right when you hit the clip it starts going down but it's not also slow since it's a freeze frame so something like this now what we're going to do next, you see this transparent layer. Now to remove this, what we're going to do is go to our effects and presets, type motion tile and click and drag this to our clip layer. Now we're going to just bump this up, make sure mirror edges is checked and just bump this up like this. So now when you're zooming in, you have some of these, you know, reflections in the side. So it's not just a blank slate. But if you don't want to have that, what you can do is hit S on the clip and scale it up a bit. So when you're doing the zoom in, you know, you won't see as much of the reflectivity but when you transition it and finally into the next clip add a shake so it'll still look clean you're not seeing any of the reflectivity but if you don't mind that just leave your scale to 100 and follow along to see how you can also remove this second handedly so now what we're going to do next is we're going to add some drop shadow to all of these watch layers now it doesn't matter what type of drop shadow you have if it's the default or sapphire both works for the sake of this tutorial i'll just use a default so here we're going to see it is applied to this layer. We're going to bump up the softness to about 30, the opacity up a little bit and the distance to about 21. Now we can copy that and hold all of these, you know, click all of these layers and control V. And now we have drop shadow for the rest of these clips. Now we can enable motion blur on all of these and we'll get this cool, nice motion blur effect. Just like that. If you want this watch to, you know, go down smoothly, we're going to right click keyframe assistant easy ease and do the same thing we did with the zoom in now what i'm gonna do this is optional you guys can follow along i'm not really gonna be precise with this just make sure you guys pause and you know go back if you guys miss a step so i'm gonna enable scale on this clip as well as my position and i'm gonna leave these keyframes here because this is the frame i wanted to end in at the end of the clip but here, as we get towards the reflectivity, what I'm gonna do is have this scaled up a bit and also up here a little bit. So it's still centered and you don't see much as much as that, you know, reflectivity, but as it goes, it positions perfectly. If we take a look at this, you'll see now that we're not seeing none of the reflectivity around, which will be the motion tile. And we're getting that nice, smooth, seamless transition look to it. Now, these are important key key parts to this, uh, you know, effect because you want it to look clean overall. You don't want it to look choppy. And following this step by step, you'll make this effect look amazing. But yeah, that'll pretty much be it for today's tutorial. This is the infinite zoom transition. If you guys did follow through and you guys are doing this effect now, please leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and leave comments down for, you know, future tutorials I should do. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.